Okay, let's get right at it with our power panel. We welcome former Deputy Independent Counsel Saul Weisberg, also former Assistant U.S. Attorney Andrew McCarthy. Thank you so much, gentlemen, both of you, for all of your help in this coverage. Saul, first to you, what do you now think of the merits of the Trump indictment? There's lots of talk about government abuse of power here, and Special Counsel Smith has a history of overcharging. What do you make of it now, Saul? Well, even, even people who are anti-former President Trump and have been clamoring for an indictment, talk about and recognize the, quote, novel approach uh, of a lot of these charges. They, they have the, they pose the threat of criminalizing a tremendous amount of protected uh, free speech activity. And keep this in mind, when you prosecute somebody based on a novel approach in the law, you run the risk that even if your interpretation of the law is ultimately upheld, there's a due process problem because the defendant hasn't received notice that what he or she is doing is even criminal. That's it. So, uh, what I, Saul I really just said. Yeah. Th so there's a due process violation. Is that what of the Constitution? Is that what you're saying, Saul? There is a potential due process problem in using a novel approach that no criminal defendant could have ever been put on notice about. Got it. Saul, Andrew McCarthy, let's bring him in. Prosecutors, along with what Saul is saying, Andrew, they're going to have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Trump had corrupt intent saying the election was stolen. But where's the smoking gun audio tape of Trump saying, I know I lost, but we got to still go, and go ahead and do this anyway? Yeah, well, I think, Liz, I would, I would hop on to Saul's point because I think all the stuff about Trump's intent is very interesting. What's in the indictment is Smith's version of what Trump was told by people think, that Smith thinks are authoritative, which means that if it comes to it, Trump is going to bring in the hundred people who were telling him something else and, and make the same argument that, you know, you can deduce uh, his mindset from that as well. But to me, you don't even get to the question of criminal intent unless what they've charged is actually a crime. And, you know, Saul just mentioned putting the defendant on notice of what's charged. My, I, I have a slightly different take on it. What I think is that they're charging something that's not actually a crime on the fact pattern that's here. So, for example, if I'm right that in federal law, fraud means a deceptive scheme to bilk somebody out of money or property, then the government's not at liberty to stretch that into, you know, criminalizing somebody's idea of what good government looks like. Yeah, so what do you make of that, Saul, what Andrew just said? Oh, I agree. That, there's a whole separate problem. Uh, uh, a sta it, there's a huge statutory rate reach in this indictment. And like I said, there's a constitutional problem of, of taking what looks like protected speech and turning it into a crime. Now, he says in the indictment, uh, well, of course, he's got a constitutional right, pre former President Trump, to, to lie, uh, but apparently uh, not if he does it in the particular way that um, Jack Smith has charged. And I, I, think, I think there are just a number of problems with this, and he's throwing a bunch of things at the, on the wall and hoping that one of them sticks. And uh, I think everybody should be worried. There's a great op-ed piece uh, by Kim Strassel in the Journal today, Wall Street Journal, that gives several examples of, of uh, political episodes we're aware of that under the theory of this indictment, you could prosecute somebody. Uh, when, when President Obama, uh, when President Biden canceled student debt after saying a year before that um, he didn't have the power to do that. Are you going to call his advisors in, uh, indict him and call his advisors in and, and, and have them say, well, we told him it's illegal for him to do it. I mean, the, the implications of this indictment are enormous for protected speech. Yeah, so with Saul and Andrew, what you're both saying, I mean, this feels like a stretch. And I don't know how they're going to do a speedy trial before 2024, given all the ramifications and consequences of serious questions that you both are raising. I mean, lots of critics and watchdogs say the Trump indictments is it's just the latest in a six year track record of Democrat abuses of government power. Impeach Trump just months after he took office. Democrats funding and igniting Trump Russia. The Hunter Biden laptop cover up. Uh, DOJ officials stonewalling probes into Hunter Biden and DOJ plea deal giving Hunter Biden blanket immunity for future crimes. So, Andrew, how are they going to do a speedy trial before the 2024 election? This indictment literally lists election issues in at least seven states. 
Yeah, and obviously what they're trying to do is push it. The whole point is to litigate the case close to the time of, uh, of, of the election. Uh, and I think, Liz, that they've put themselves in a real box here. If, if you're Smith and you really want to get this case to trial, you indict this one first. So what he's done is he indicted the Mar-a-Lago case first. He got a judge to set a May trial date because he's he's hammering for a trial in that case, too. And now he's going to try to push another judge in a jurisdiction far away to set a trial date in this as well. And I think Trump, no matter how unfavorable the court may seem, I think Trump has a powerful due process argument that he's being deprived what every defendant is entitled to, which is the right to mount a defense. When is he supposed to get ready for trial? Yeah, when is he supposed point. to investigate this case if he's in Florida? You know, Saul, can you also take this on? The fight over the charge that Trump pushed a slate of electors in several, seven battleground states. The special counsel is saying that these were fake electors. Pence said Trump and his lawyers asked Pence to return the vote back to the states or literally reject votes. Trump's lawyer is saying no. Trump asked for that the states could either audit or recertify whether the vote count was correct and put forward their slate of electors. What do you make of this uh, charge, Saul? Well, like a lot of things in the indictment, even assuming that it's a crime, you could have charged it much more narrowly. I would have expected to see some counts under 18 U.S.C. 1001, the Martha Stewart uh, statute of lying to the government. I mean, part of my problem with this indictment is this, it's the breath, the interfering with government uh, functions. Uh, you know, it's it's very similar to other things that he has charged that Jack Smith he charged Governor McDonald with in Virginia, and Supreme Court just said it's it's way too broad. So uh, I've got a problem with all of it. I don't approve in any way of what former President Trump did uh, leading up to January 6th and on January 6th. But uh, and I also agree with Andy, absolutely. He's, he's got now going to be indicted. He's indicted already on, on, in three different cases, in three different parts of the country, and he has an absolute right to prepare for trial. Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think any of these cases are going to trial before the election. That's an interesting call, what Saul just said, Andrew. And there's also this, Andy, this, is this just a coincidence, the timeline of the Biden scandals? and the shoes that are dropping in those scandals, and then the Trump indictments coming right when the Biden corruption controversies erupt. And also Democrats now trying to claim the prosecution of Trump is, you know, all about the law, that it has nothing to do with their seven-year push to go after Trump. What do you think of all this, Andy? Yeah, I, I think, Liz, that it would be easier for them to argue that this was just happenstance and coincidence if it wasn't so blatantly political. So, for example, Jack Smith's existence as a special counsel is political. There's no conflict of interest between the Biden Justice Department and former President Trump. In fact, they were investigating Trump for 18 months uh, before they named, uh, before Garland named Smith as a special counsel. There is a profound p conflict of interest with the Biden Justice Department supposedly investigating the Biden family, but there's no special counsel there. So he brought Smith in in order to set up the fiction that Smith is like this independent actor and Biden and Garland don't have anything to do with the case. And then when Smith brings the indictment that they fully expected he would bring all along, he gives a press conference the other day where he speaks for three minutes, and two and a half of the three minutes are about the Capitol riot, which is not charged in the indictment. Yeah, that's so you why, have to think that's that it's wild political. Stuff. Yeah, that's why there's no seditious uh, con conspiracy charge or incitement to insurrection charges at all in the indictment. That's an important point you just made, Andrew McCarthy. And Saul, you had some great stuff, too. We really appreciate your insights, gentlemen, tonight. It's great to have you both on. Thanks for joining us.